Before buying a yacht, many people prefer to dip their toes in the water by chartering a yacht first. But how do you go about chartering a yacht? Well, today I'm in the head office of Northrop & Johnson in Fort Lauderdale to speak with John Chikonovitz. John was a charter captain for 20 years before becoming an extremely successful charter broker. In a conversation before this interview, we reckon he's arranged for about a thousand charters. So there's very little that he doesn't know and very few questions that he can't answer. So John, thanks for taking time out of your very busy day to spend some time with us. David, it's my pleasure. Now, I've never chartered a yacht before. I want to charter for the first time. Where do I get started? David, you've come to the right person. And it's, so I hear. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, been in the business for more than 30 years and booked a multitude, hundreds, if not even a thousand charters at this point. And it's my pleasure to give you a little 411 on how it all works. And in answer to your question, where we start is with the dream. What is, what is your dream to charter is the big question with clients. What, where do you want to go? What do you want to experience? And it, it all starts with the location. And from a location standpoint, the Mediterranean tends to be the popular summer area and the Caribbean tends to be the popular winter area. And if you'd like, we could just take one destination as an example. Yeah, let's, let's run with that because I, um, as you may know, I have a big affinity with Italy and I hear people's reports from the Amalfi Coast, not just from the perspective that it's such a beautiful area, but the food is incredible. My dream definitely would be to charter in the Amalfi Coast. Amalfi is an excellent location. And in fact, as a captain for many years, it was one of my very favorite destinations for clients to enjoy their vacation aboard their yacht. And um, Amalfi has many locations within it that people might not realize. You would arrive into Naples normally for your Amalfi charter and cruise off to Amalfi itself or Sorrento or Ischia or Ponza. And of course, the jewel and the most famous place would be Capri in the region that usually comes culminates the end of the charter for uh, people going to Amalfi. So would you put together a selection of places for me to see in the Amalfi Coast? Is that how, how that works? Once I've, once I've said to you, this is the area, can you put together an itinerary for me? Great question. And generally, we start out with a, a stock itinerary that we have ready to go the moment you ask. And from there, once we select your yacht and your captain, we liaise to create a bespoke itinerary really to suit your needs, exactly what you would want to do. The captain and myself will know the best place to go for dinner, the nightclubs, the hot spots, the spas, the anchorages, and we will dial all of those things in for you. How, how flexible is that? Because I, I can't imagine that I'd want to have everything robotically put together for me. If I really enjoy a particular anchorage and I want to go back there the next day, but the itinerary says I need to do something else. Can you, I do that? You, in a sense, are the captain of your voyage and the, the real captain will follow your lead. So if you want to switch day one with day three, if you want to X out a day entirely, if you want to stay a second day in the same place, that's the beauty of the yacht charter. You can really command your trip, go where you want, when you want, with little restriction. So we've got the... The location, the itinerary, what's next? Next is your yacht selection. And oh. that's, that's where I come in. That's my favorite thing to do. I'll work with you realizing how many people you have in your party. First is the, the most important step. We'll find a yacht that's sized to you by how many staterooms you'll require. If you have 10 people, for instance, you'll probably want a five stateroom yacht. If you've got 12 people, which tends to be the maximum legally allowed by international maritime law for a private yacht charter versus a commercial yacht yacht charter. Um, we'll pick a six stateroom yacht. And this puts you into the size range from a minimum. So a typical five stateroom yacht might be about 45 meters and a typical six stateroom yacht might be about 50 meters. And from there, the sky's the limit and we can have all kinds of fun with all sorts of yachts with different amenities and price ranges. But that's a good baseline to use. So my, my fantasy charter, I have a family of five. I'd love to bring my sister and her husband, my 
brother and his wife. So we're at nine people. Surely looking at a 150 foot yacht. Give me some ballpark prices if you can. Sure. It's funny you say 150 foot yacht tends to work out to somewhere between 150 to 200,000 euros per week as a base, as a starting point. Again, from there, we can go up to any size and any price range easily three, four, five hundred thousand a week. Um, but you're probably looking at somewhere around 200,000 um, in Europe. Of course, we'd be in euros, not in dollars. And then we have some associated expenses with uh, that price if you'd be interested. Yes, please. What, what are the associated expenses? So the important one to get out of the way first is the VAT. And VAT now in nearly every country is chargeable. Um, the Caribbean still does run VAT free. So if you're really wanting to go without paying a tax, um, the Caribbean is mainly a free port for free tax cruising. Um, in Italy, it tends to be around 22%. In France, it tends to be about 20%. And that's on the charter fee itself. Itself. So you charter the yacht for that 200,000, you pay the VAT, which is arguably another 40, 42, 44,000. From there, we have our APA or Advanced Provisioning Allowance. And this is designed and set up to cover your consumables on board. So anything that you consume or the yacht consumes on your behalf is charged to your APA account. And a guideline for that is 25 to 30% of the cost of the charter. So on that $200,000 charter, you're going to fund your APA account with 50 or 60,000 euros. The charges to that will all be point of sale cost. There's no markup per se on any of those things and any remainder that you have left. And there should be a surplus left over. Yeah. Actually, we would expect you might only spend 20% of that 30% is refunded to you. Or in most cases, our clients will... Um, apply that towards the crew gratuity. In crew gratuity in Europe, a baseline is about 10%. Some people give 15 or 20% if they're very generous. Um, and you'll bolster the remaining APA with some additional funds to cover your crew gratuity. Okay, so I've got the, the actual cost of the charter. I've got the VAT. The APA is the Advanced Provisioning Allowance. So what's included? I mean, obviously food, I guess. What else is included in this APA? So the APA is anything that could be consumed, and food is a big one, um, beverages, your wine, your champagne, caviar, those things, your dockage for the yacht, your fuel for the yacht. Oh, that's a biggie, I guess. Yeah. Yes, the fuel's, the fuel's a big one. If you're cruising a Malfi, though, it's not so bad because the distances are very close. And in fact, that's a good touching point because these yachts are not designed for your one-week charter to cover any long distances. In fact, you may only cruise two, three, four hours a day. It's to change the atmosphere, to change the yeah. island, to change the location without trying to go to a different country or travel a great long distance. Um, so Amalfi is great to minimize your fuel costs. Now, just going back again, because I really want viewers to, to understand all of the costs, because it's only a disappointment when you haven't been told about something and then you discover it afterwards. If you go in with your eyes open, then it's, it can be a wonderful experience. So we have, let's say, 200,000 a week, for example, for the yacht, the VAT, the APA. Um, I now see what's covered in the APA, but at the end of the charter, how do I know what's been spent? That's a great question. You'll be given a, a invoice at the end that's sort of like checking out of a hotel. Right. Only with the yacht charter, it's at point of sale cost. There's no markup that a typical hotel might charge. So you have a very clear, concise invoice showing uh, what was spent on your behalf. And the captain is happy to present each and every receipt to you and review it, sit down with you, make sure you're comfortable with it and happy with the expenses. And that would lead us into how did we come up to these expenses? And a, a, a great uh, way to look at that is with your preference sheets. So we will send you, once the yacht has been determined, a set of preference sheets where you list how you like to eat, what you like to eat, what times you like to eat, what you like to drink, how much you want to spend on wine, how much you want to spend on caviar, for instance. All of these things are very important that we dial in to give you what you want. So once I'm happy with all of that and I'm comfortable with the amount that it's going to cost and I've established what yacht I want and everything's looking good, what's the next step? 
The next step is to go to contract. And that's a, a very exciting moment. That puts us together with the owner of the yacht and makes your, your trip come complete. And if you'd like, I'd be happy to describe a little bit how the contract works for you. Please do. You got it. So the contract needs to know a few important elements. First would be where do you want to pick up and drop off the yacht. Beyond that, the contract doesn't care where you go. You're only constrained by time. And these yachts typically are not like cruise ships that'll cruise 24 hours a day. It's cruising short distances to change your experience in a couple of hours. And you can determine the itinerary at that point with the captain, as we discussed in the beginning, exactly where you want to go. And if you'd like to change your mind, it's no problem. Um, from there, we will arrange the times of your arrival. And in fact, the crew will always greet you at the airport and bring you with transportation directly to the yacht. Um, then in the contract, we talk about those price points. And we've got, as you mentioned, the contract price of the yacht itself would be the 200000 in that example. Then the contract reflects the VAT, the amount that you've placed for APA. And that pretty much completes the important integral points uh, that are relevant to you in your contract. And what's the payment structure like? When do I actually have to? Great, great question. So once the contract is completed, we have a five-day window to sign and to send a deposit. The deposit is 50% of that charter fee, so it'd be 100000 to sign the contract. And then the balance of funds are due 30 days prior to sailing. Now, for somebody who's never chartered before, um, irrespective of how wealthy they are, I find that wealthy people always have an appreciation for the value of money. And, and if they've never chartered before, surely they're going to start to think, well, what could go wrong? Do I really want to put all of this money down you know, right now? So how, is, how would I be protected as a charter client if things do go wrong? That's a really great question. And as your broker, it's very important that I make sure you are protected in these events. And first, I'll tell you, it's very unusual that we run into any real difficulties um, with the finances, with the yachts. In my tenure, uh, I think I could count on one hand the number of, of times there's been a real problem that's occurred. However, how are you protected? Great question. So the owner actually doesn't receive any money until after you arrive on the vessel. And he receives his first payment 24 hours after your arrival of only half of the charter fee. And then he receives the second half of the charter fee 24 hours after you depart. And that's to protect you first that there's a yacht there for you when you arrive. Second, that you're pleased with the yacht. And again, it's very unusual that somebody would call and say, uh, this was not what we were promised. Of course, you need an excellent broker to find you an excellent product to make sure of that. And, and it's very important you research your broker and, and understand their knowledge and, and experience to get you the right product. Um, beyond that, we have the ability to offer you trip cancellation or curtailment insurance. That's an added protection. It can run from five to 10% of the charter fee if you wish to take it out, which will blanket cover anything that did come up. Um, but those payments are released in a way that helps protect your, your money. Do you find that in your experience, you get contacted a lot during the charter period? That's, that's another great question. First of all, I'm in contact daily with the captain checking in. Second, we'll set up a WhatsApp chat with you, the captain and myself, should you have any questions and there's nobody convenient to answer them. I'm always watching. I'm always behind you. And I'm there to follow up before, during and after your experience to make sure it was great. And one last question, John, because I think it's it's interesting the perception that people have of yachts and life on yachts and people who charter yachts. Um, do you find that charter guests tend to be party animals who <laughs> they're on a yacht and they want to drink and do all kinds of crazy things? What, what What's usually people's behavior like? On I, I, I like that question. So it's not quite what you see on TV, to be honest. Yes. Um, typically, it, it, these price points of these big yachts that we're talking about, it's more family oriented these days. And in the past, we did see a lot of really hard partying and rock star and corporate events. But 
Today, it's more family oriented, more couples. Um, generally, the people are fairly well behaved. They have a great time. They drink lots of champagne, but we're, we're not seeing that riotous sort of behavior that we saw years ago. So people tend to behave themselves on the <laughs> A little bit, a little I, bit. I guess if any damage was done to the, to the yachts, does that get taken out of the APA? How does, it how does, it does yes. And again, that's a rarity. We, we, I don't have many charters that are um, being charged for damages, but there's generally APA left over. And of course, you would have to pay for any damage that you created. And one last question. I know you weren't expecting this, but you're answering them so well and so so thoroughly. Um, what about uh, if people want to take their pets with them, if they want to take a dog on a yacht? For That's example? another really great question. And people more and more these days do travel with their pets. And in the echelon that we're speaking of, often clients will fly in on a private jet, whether it was a net jet, for instance, or uh, their own jet. So pets do come from time to time. And there are more and more yachts now that are accommodating for pets. Typically, it would be a toy dog rather than an 80 pound uh, Rottweiler. Rottweiler. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but we, we do have uh, actually one one very notorious um, vessel. I won't mention it, but great big 60-plus uh, meter vessel that has its own mascot dog aboard um, of the captains. So how about Perfect. that? That's amazing. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much, John. That's been absolutely fascinating and really useful. Thanks. It's my pleasure, David. <laughs> I didn't know the handshake or a fist bump. I, yeah, I screwed up on that.